Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a look at another brand new Phase 6 edition that was added for the sole purpose of logging operations. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into it and check it out. The John Deere Forwarder is a machine that's built as a one truck logging apparatus. The unique design of the forwarder has features to allow the cab to rotate and follow the crane making for easy loading of timber. In SnowRunner, this vehicle is the Aramatsu Forester. The Forester is the first vehicle that was made purely for logging missions. This highly specialized 8x8 vehicle has unique logging features to help make the hardest logging contracts a little bit easier. The Forester does have some pretty big drawbacks, however its upsides are rather appealing. So before we jump into those pros and cons, let's take a look at the base stats. The Aramatsu Forester is classified as a heavy truck, it weighs 14.3 tons. In its stock configuration, it boasts a power to weight of B+, a durability of A, fuel consumption B+, fuel capacity is 340 liters or 90 gallons, it comes with a stock suspension, its tires also come stock with a 52 inch mud tire, its all wheel drive is always on, and its diff lock is switchable. Alright, let's dive into the pros and cons of the Aramatsu Forester. Keeping the order of operations with the bad news first, opening up our downsides list at the number one spot, front overhang, and ground clearance. Starting out our list with our most noticeable downsides, upon inspection of the Forester, a player can easily infer that snags along your journey are almost certain. With the Forester having that large overhang, yes, you will take damage. However, sometimes the vehicle will actually glide over those obstacles, avoiding that engine hit. Lastly, its ground clearance isn't too bad, but in those deep spots, mud can slow it down from its frame touching the elements. Downside number two, maneuverability and no snorkel. From the footage in the video, you can see that it's not the fastest vehicle off-road and the articulated steering makes maneuverability tricky in certain areas. The vehicle can tow trailers, but due to its articulated steering, just be careful when rolling out of turns. The vehicle's back end will actually whip the trailers around if the rollout to straight driving is too fast. Also, I have to mention its lack of snorkel. Water crossings are showing up much more these days, and lacking this feature makes this one a downside. Downside number three, long frame. To be brief, the Forester is a longer vehicle, which can further hinder where it can go with these. I tested if it would high center easily, but with its steering articulation, most of the time, one of two axles up front seemed to grab traction, which prevented this. For this one, just drive safely and know that the vehicle can get snagged up here and there. Downside number four, somewhat underpowered. The Aramatsu does have an engine that's in the top 10 when it comes to power, and it does share its engine with other trucks like the International HX 520, the BM17, the Dairy Longhorn 4520, the Western Star 49X, the Freightliner M916A1, and the CAT CT680 and 681. However, it is heavier than all those trucks except the Dairy Longhorn. Something I noticed is that the Forester can do a fine job when hauling logs on its frame, but when you add a trailer with weight, it seems to struggle a little bit more. Hauling a packed medium log trailer and on the vehicle's frame at the same time will slow this vehicle down somewhat. However, in the vehicle's defense, medium logs are the third heaviest packed cargo in the game. When the vehicle tends to struggle, which is sometimes due to those heavy loads, there is usually one fix, which is next on our downsides list. Downside number five, it's dependent on differential locking. It's a good thing that the vehicle does have differential locking, but it needs lower gears to benefit from this feature. 
Building off our previous downside, a lot of times progress will be tough with heavy loads until the activation of differential locking. I noticed this on uphill scenarios or in thicker conditions. Throughout the video, you might see slow progress in low gear, and that's just because in automatic, the vehicle had trouble or it was approaching the stall in high gear as well. Overall, I think it will do fine, but I believe it's going to be at slower paces. Downside number six, no chained tire option. At this point, we pretty much know that snow maps seem to be more difficult. It is wonderful knowing that we do have a dedicated logging machine to help out, but 50% of all those maps have ice and snow. Not having a chained option can be troublesome. However, yes, you can manage without them, but it would be nice to have this option, so I felt this one was a downside. And finally, coming in at downside number seven, it's missing one logging type ability. The Forester can accommodate medium and short logs on the vehicle's frame and can be switched to either of them by attaching or detaching the medium logging extension. In my humble opinion, the vehicle is still missing the hardest log to carry. As we will learn, the vehicle is very stable and it's great for what it does. Yet, as of now, there are other trucks that can haul all three types of logs. Call me a complainer if you would like but I do feel that it would be a dream if it had the ability to haul long logs as well. Well folks, those are some pretty big hurdles to deal with, but stick around because the Forester does have what it takes to be an effective logging machine. Here are the pros for the Aramatsu Forester. Coming in at upside number one, all wheel drive and differential locking. In short, Having all-wheel drive on an 8x8 is going to be an upside. Couple that with a switchable differential locking, and this is always going to be a good feature for the off-roading world. Most trucks do have all-wheel drive, but as I have said in previous reviews, I believe that the differential locking feature can either make or break a vehicle's performance. The Forester has always-on all-wheel drive, and its differential locking, as we know, is switchable. This means that the vehicle will perform better in those lower gears when the differential locking is activated. Upside number two, stability. In truth, we all have spilt out all of our logs that were in our trucks at some point in our journeys, and we have felt that frustration. After testing, I feel the Forester actually is quite stable. However, just be aware that when you add logs to the cradle and pack them, you will need to be careful despite the vehicle's wide and low sitting nature. I'm not going to go into much detail here, but the articulation helps with the vehicle's balance due to the cab and the truck's frame acting independently, allowing for it to crawl over terrain. Upside number three, tires and suspension. To be brief, the vehicle has 52 inch mud tires and also a walking beam suspension that has excellent travel. Instead of me talking about it, I believe the video will tell you all you need to know when seeing the Forester crawl over those large boulders. Upside number four, fuel capacity, consumption, and the advanced special gearbox. All the vehicles that share this same engine really don't have good fuel economy, and they actually are pretty fuel hungry, except the Forester. Why? Well, I believe the difference is the advanced special gearbox. That truly is the only difference, and I feel that this helps benefit fuel mileage, as you can see. That large fuel tank, coupled with really good fuel mileage, will allow players to navigate for longer periods of time. This is such a great feature because we all know how much time that logging takes, so having a fuel efficient truck for this job is definitely an asset. Upside number five, it's the best self-logging vehicle. To keep this upside short-winded, I'm going to speak to anyone who has manually loaded logs at night in SnowRunner. It is not fun. 
The Forester, however, with its rotating cab, can keep its headlights fixed on the crane, making logging operations so much easier at night. It also can be used in the first person mode as well. Only one other vehicle can self-load short logs, and that's the Paystar 5600 TS. But it cannot do the same with medium logs like the Forester. To wrap this one up, I feel this vehicle makes logging so much more tolerable. And finally, coming in at upside number 6, the vehicle can be multi-use if needed. Comparing the Forester to the CAT 745C, they both can carry medium logs. However, the CAT 745C cannot tow a trailer at all. In this way, the Forester can do more rolls than one by towing a log trailer, other types of cargo, or any hitch trailer to support driver's needs. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power, I gave it a 3. Despite its engine being rather strong, it still somewhat struggles with multiple heavy loads. For terrain navigation, a rating of 4. Its ability to handle uneven surfaces is admirable, but the vehicle's ground clearance and front overhang will catch up in places. For this one, I felt that a 3 was generous. Logging is difficult, and doing that task with an articulated steering vehicle might pose challenges for newer players. For aesthetics, it's not the prettiest vehicle in the game, but it does do the job well. Stability is trustworthy, but remember to take extra care when you have a full load of logs. Oddly, this vehicle gets really good consumption under the advanced special gearbox. I believe drivers will get plenty of range out of this vehicle. The vehicle can only haul two of the three types of logs, as well as hitch trailers. I felt that a three was quite fair. If it could haul all three types of logs, I think this rating would have been a five. Good weight, decent power, always on all wheel drive and switchable diff lock, as well as large tires. Yeah, it's going to do pretty well off-road at slower paces. So in conclusion, the Aramatsu Forester is a welcomed addition to the game. For such a long time, us players have needed a dedicated logging truck. With new updates rolling out, there is however an argument that other trucks can move all three types of logs. However, they cannot load themselves, like this logging vehicle. In this vehicle's defense, it is a very enjoyable logging truck and it can attach hitch trailers, making it somewhat multi-use. The Forester makes night operations so much more enjoyable, especially manual loading of logs. From testing, there are only a few things that I feel critical of, which is the limited power at times and the dependence on low gears with differential locking. In addition to those critiques, I do wish it could handle long logs, but it is a great addition to the game as I've stated before for logging operations. So in closing, the Forester has been very surprising. It has good fuel economy, amazing suspension properties, and it has an ability to attach hitch trailers as well. There are a few things that drivers need to overcome, but overall I'm pleased with its slow and steady, dependable nature. Try it out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the Aramatsu Forester. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless and stay upright.